So bring your body to a really comfy position. When we approach breathing and mantra and sound making, we want to offer the, the front of the body as much space as possible. So this cue of having a tall spine, sitting with a tall spine, it's not about looking you know, really pretty and having this sort of um, glamorized posture that people talk about. It's about giving space to the lungs, to the ribs, which house the lungs, to the diaphragm, to the belly, which needs to be able to move, to give the diaphragm space to move. So bring your body into a position where you will be able to create sound. And sometimes that means sitting upright, sometimes it means standing, sometimes it's nice to lean with the back against a wall. And bring yourself into a position where you can really start to let your belly go. And you might want to bring your hands onto your belly and really start to encourage that sense of softening, of release. And start to deepen the breath. Uh, release the jaw. Let the neck be soft. And again, focus back to the belly and really let the belly go. It takes a bit of courage for some people to start to soften the muscles around the belly. So many of us have been taught that we're supposed to always hold the tummy in, that we're supposed to have a flat belly or strong core muscles, whatever belief you, you hold. And I would really invite you to let go of those beliefs and instead think what is the most important thing for your body to stay alive? It's breathing. And how can we facilitate a deep, deep breath? And that is by softening the belly. When the belly is soft, the diaphragm has space to move down. That allows the space for the ribs to move sideways, front and back. That allows space for the lungs to expand. So really let your belly go. And as you breathe in, the picture the air traveling in through the nose or the mouth, down the neck, down the torso, all the way to the belly. And as you exhale, the belly softens and the air is gently encouraged out of the body. Inhale, air travels in and down. Exhale, air travels out and up. Inhale, air in, diaphragm and breath descends down. Exhale, diaphragm and breath up. Keep that going, inhale, think down. Exhale, think up. Inhale down. Exhale up. Inhale. Exhale. Now we can start to make the exhale uh, slightly sounded through the mouth. It's just a very satisfied, gentle sounded sigh through the mouth. Like you've just been out all day or you've been busy in the house and you've just sat down at the end of the day with your hot chocolate. <sighs> 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 
And then you can start to extend that exhale and extend the sound a little bit. And then it might start to turn into an om. Inhale, breath and diaphragm down. Exhale, diaphragm and om rises. Oh. Inhale, in and down. Oh. Om that feels natural. Oh. In a few moments of natural breathing and just see if any tension has crept into the body. Send a bit of love, focus, compassion there, releasing belly, jaw neck, hips, shoulders. And I'm gonna lead the peace chant, Sahana Vavatu chant, which is all about student and teacher working together approaching a relationship and a practice that is equal, free from an unhealthy power dynamic, free from any ill will. It's just focused around sharing and love and compassion. And if you know the chant, you can feel free to join in. Otherwise, allow the sound to just wash over you. If mantra is not your cup of tea, you can just spend a few moments focusing on your breath. This mantra doesn't call on any particular deity. There is no um, particular religious name called, just so you know, because it's in Sanskrit and you might not know the translation. So just to help you feel comfortable and make your decision about whether or not you'd like to engage with it. I'll start with an Om. I'll head into the chant and at the end, there'll be another Om and three Shantis if you just wanted to join in with those sections. Sahana Vavatu Sahana Hunaktu Sahaviryam Tejasvi Navaritamastu Mavid Vishava Shanti 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 And I'll return to this mantra at the end of the practice with a call and response. So if you don't know it, we can spend a little time learning it together. But just spend a moment thinking about what it means to practice with no ill will. Now, obviously, I hope there's no ill will between you and me. 
how much time do you spend thinking about practicing with no ill will towards yourself? with love and compassion and acceptance. If frustration arises, how do you meet that frustration? If you have goals or aspirations for your practice at the weekends or when you come to your mat during the week, do you get frustrated or irritated or speak negatively towards yourself if your practice isn't what you hoped it would be? How do you decide what your practice should be? What if it weren't even a practice, it was just playing, it was just being? So take a moment to think, what does it mean for you to have no ill will during your movement or yoga playtime? And if you wanted to have some music for today, feel free to pop on a little playlist now. And then start to make your way towards all fours, hands and knees. And I will meet you when you're ready, all fours, hands and knees. Music, if you'd like it, pop it on now. And as you find yourself on all fours, spread the fingers really wide. And have a little sway, a little move around, just tune into your body and figure out what feels intuitive. And we're straight away coming into a weight bearing on the wrists. So how are they feeling today? Maybe you spend a little time slightly bringing the weight more onto the knees, a little bit more onto the hands just so that you can shift forwards, backwards, and gently encourage some fluid and life and awareness into the wrists. And then bring your focus onto the hips, the knees, the lower body. So as you shift your weight forwards and backwards, side to side, you start to bring some awareness and juice and fluid and compassion into the lower body. Any creaks, clicks, any sense of strength and openness, any stiffness, hesitancy, we're just aware of it, we meet it we notice it, no need to control it. And then come onto the forearms, then onto the knees, but onto the forearms. And now really drop the head. Have a little sway side to side. No worry about controlling shoulders and spine, just really drop the head. Little snaky movements with the shoulders and the neck. Allow the weight of the skull to gently give some space between the vertebrae of the neck. How's that jaw feeling? Do you need to release off any tension there? Maybe parting the teeth. And then coming back onto the hands, all fours, hands and knees. and gently tuck the toes and send the weight so far back to the feet that maybe the knees hover off just a little bit. And then the knees come back down and send your weight as far forward as you can. A little stretch and challenge for the wrists and then push your weight back. Maybe the knees hover off, drop the head. Knees down, travel forward, start to Open up the forearms, weight back, knees hover off, drop the head, push the floor away with the hands. Gently weight travels forward, little challenge for the wrists. And then bring yourself back to the center, tops of the feet onto the floor. 
Bring your weight a little bit further back towards your knees and then bring the tops of the hands onto the floor with the fingers pointing in towards one another. And a slight shift side to side, but for this one, keep your weight a little bit more back on your knees. Even though we are, of course, working with the wrists, send your focus into your tail and have a little juicy, snaky wiggle with your tail side to side. And feel as you snake the tail, that movement travel up the spine. That movement travel all the way up to the shoulders. We find a connection from tail all the way to crown. And then rippling up to a high kneeling position. Bring the hands to rest on the front of the chest, flat, palm, flat palms, fl front of the chest. Oh, I need to put my teeth in. <laughs> flat palms, front of chest. Okay, if it's more comfortable, you can have the knees a little wider than the, than the feet. Some people prefer to have almost like a diamond shape with the, with the foundation, you decide. And take some really deep breaths into the area underneath your hands. The rise and fall of the chest with the breath. Keep the belly soft. Have you already started to slide into that habit, into that pattern of holding the tummy in? Let it go. And start to draw some big circles with your elbows. So lead with one elbow. It doesn't matter forwards or backwards, but a big circle with the elbow. And let that move the whole upper body. It's going to travel movement into the ribs, the hips, down towards the knees. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It might look like mine. It might look different. Let your body move. Change direction with the circles. When you've changed the direction, how does this change the feeling in the body? Where are you feeling stretch, effort? Does it feel full of ease or awkward? Does it feel wonderful or weird or both? <laughs> Just being curious about that movement. And then come back into the center, hands on the chest and breathe. Inhale, breath and diaphragm moves down. Exhale, breath and diaphragm moves up. Inhale, breath, diaphragm moves down. Exhale through the mouth. <sighs> Inhale. Side out. <sighs> Inhale, reach the arms up. Let the shoulders lift. Elbows, fingers, gaze lifts. Exhale, twist to one side, open the arms wide. Doesn't matter which direction. Inhale, lift the arms, travel back to face forwards. Exhale, twist to the other side. Inhale, through the center. This time as you twist, send your hips back towards your heels, maybe a little lean or hinge forwards. Inhale, through the center, little squeeze of your glutes to open the hips. Exhale, twist to the other side and hinge, tail goes back. Inhale through the center, little squeeze of the glutes. Exhale, hinge, twist, reach with the arms. Inhale through the center. Slow, juicy movement, twist the other way. Inhale through the center. Exhale, twist, and then bring your front forearm all the way down onto the ground. This arm that's left behind you, as you inhale, 
Begin to reach forward, shift your weight forwards, reach the arm as far forward as you can. And exhale, drift it back. Maybe you're lightly touching the floor, hips go back. Inhale, weight comes forwards. Reach forwards. Exhale, circling it back. Doesn't matter what it looks like, just explore movement. Keep it going. And the next time the arm is back, plant the hand on the floor, begin to squeeze your hips, to lift your hips forwards. The hand that was at the front begins to lift all the way up to the sky. Drop your hips back to your heels, bring that arm forward to tap the mat, and then lift the arm up, lift the hips up. It's early on in the practice. There's no need to do a huge big back bend. We're just exploring movement. Use the breath however feels intuitive. And get curious about the shoulders. Are you able to find a little bit more space? A little more separation? More push and pull? Come all the way back through the center, sitting on your heels. Reach the arms up, lift up to a high kneel. Inhale, shoulders, elbows, fingers, eyes look up. Exhale, twist, one direction. Doesn't matter which direction, open the arms. Inhale, up to face the front. Exhale, twist the other way, open your arms. So we've done this movement before, a simple movement, keep it going. What else can you take from this movement? What does your body need, your mind, your energy today? How can you make this simple movement serve you? Good. Remember which hand you had on the floor first last time. You're going to tip forward with the other forearm on the floor this time. And as you inhale, you reach the other arm forwards and exhale, circling it back. Inhale, reach forwards. Exhale, circle back. So you've got one forearm on the floor and the other arm drawing some big circles as your weight shifts forwards and backwards. So we're starting to gradually ease some strength into the shoulder whilst we continue to lubricate and blast out the cobwebs in the rest of the body. What's going on with the head and the neck? Does it feel nice to follow the hand with the eyes or drop the head? Okay. And the arm that's moving, bring it behind the body. And then lift the hips, lift the arm, little back bend. Lower the hips, lower the arm. And maybe that back hand is just on fingertips. Maybe you've got the whole hand down. Perhaps you prefer to be up in a high kneel and make the movement a little bit less about the back bend and more about the hip hinge. It's up to you. Every movement can be changed to suit your body, your temperament. It's not about what is and isn't possible. It's about what you choose, what you want. And come back through the center, lifting up through the arms, fill your lungs, reach to the fingertips, and then come all the way down, all fours, hands and knees. Take another little moment just to move around, see how this is feeling, what's going on in the body after a little time of exploration. Reach the left leg back, tuck the toes on the floor. So the left leg is straight, toes tucked on the floor. And then move the right foot out to the side, 
So you can open out and lift the left arm up. Okay. Take a deep inhale, reach that arm all the way over towards the ear. And then exhale, bring it down towards the hip. Again, simple floaty movement. Inhale, the arm reaches over. Exhale it down to the hip. Next time you reach the arm, bend your left leg just a little bit so you reach the, le the knee away from the top arm. And then exhale, you straighten the left leg. Inhale, you bend the left leg. You reach the arm over. Exhale. You straighten the leg and hand to hip. Keep this going. It's quite a demand on the hips. So it doesn't really matter how big the movement is. It's just about getting that sense of push and pull. Two opposing forces. And then remember, if you're practicing with no ill will towards yourself, it really doesn't matter what the shape looks like, how deep it is or isn't. It's just an expiration. The next time you're reaching with the left arm and the left knee is bent, just stay there for a moment and then start to bring your left hand onto the floor and walk the hands in front of you. So you've got the hands beneath the shoulders, left leg is bent and you can decide if you want the knee pointing out to the side or pointing straight forwards. Have a little explore with the foundation and just gently start to shift the hips left and right. Left and right. Get a little bit of opening on the inner thighs. And in this position now, try fully dropping your head. Let your shoulders collapse a little bit. And just give the weight of your skull into gravity. And start to walk your hands back around towards the top of the mat. Find yourself facing forwards towards the short edge of your mat. Left leg extended, toes tucked on the floor right knee underneath you. So you're like in all fours with the left leg back out straight again. Okay, lift the left leg off as you inhale, lift your chest, embrace as much or as little of a back bend as feels good to you. And exhale, curl knee to nose. Push the floor away with the hands round the back. Inhale, leg extends, chest lifts. Exhale, knee to nose, round your back. And make this movement about the slow glide of the leg. You squeeze it forward as if it was pushing a weight. You press it back as if it was pressing something away. Start to find this dance with time and space, seeing if you can extend time and space. The next time the knee comes forwards, keep it traveling forwards. Replace the left hand with the left foot. Reach the left arm up. Take a twist towards the side. Little kneeling twist. And explore any movement here that feels intuitive. You could drop the hips forwards and backwards. You might want to circle the top arm. You could have a flowing up and down. Anything you like. Just tune in. When you're not following guidance and you give yourself time to listen, what did you want? And bring the hand down, bring the knee back. Come into your high kneel again, lift the arms all the way up to the sky, Inhale, exhale, hands to belly, hands to belly. Spend some time breathing into your hands. Let the belly expand.
How much more can you let go with the belly? What have you gifted yourself so far during this practice? And what more can you offer yourself? Inhale, energy, breath, diaphragm moves down. Exhale, energy, breath, diaphragm moves up. Inhale, energy, breath, diaphragm moves down. Exhale, energy, breath, diaphragm moves up. Coming back to all fours, hands and knees. Reach the right leg back, tuck the toes on the floor. Just spend a moment there, become familiar with the shape. And then start to move the left foot out to the side so you can turn to face the right and reach the right arm up. Right leg is long and straight along the mat. Right arm is lifted up. Inhale, reach the right arm all the way forwards towards the ear. Exhale, lift the arm up and back towards the hip. Inhale, arm lifts up and forwards. Exhale, glide it up and back. Inhale, reach it forwards. This time as the arm goes back, you start to bend the right knee a little bit. Inhale, the leg straightens, you reach forwards. Exhale, back leg bends. So keep this movement going and worry less about how big it is and be curious more about the sensation, about the experience. Maybe you feel you have more movement on one side than the other. It's just an interesting thing to know about your body. And the next time the back knee is bent, keep it bent. Start to bring both hands onto the floor and walk the hands around so that you've got, you're facing the long edge. You've got your hands beneath your shoulders and both knees are bent. And then have a little explore, have a little twist around. Maybe you wanna really drop your head. You wanna explore the movement of the shoulder blades. And then start to journey your hands back towards the front of the mat and rearrange the legs so that you're back with the left knee on the ground and the right leg out straight behind you with the toes tucked. As you inhale, the right leg lifts, the chest lift, and exhale, curl the knee forward, round your spine, drop your head. Inhale, leg presses back, mindfully through space, chest glides up. Exhale, eek the nose and the knee towards one another. Inhale, press gooily through space. Exhale, draw purposefully the knee forwards. Inhale, the leg presses back, and as the knee comes forward, it comes as far forward as possible, and then the right foot replaces the right hand. Lift the right arm up, take a twist to the side, and then move around however it feels intuitive. Any movement with hips, knees, wrists. Releasing the jaw, softening the belly.
bringing the hand down, bringing the leg back so you've got both knees on the floor. Coming back into your high kneel, reach the arms up, fill your lungs, lift your gaze, bring the hands down onto the sides of the ribs, sides of the ribs. Spend some time breathing into the hands. <sighs> ribs are expanding sideways. Sucking the air into the body and recoiling to send the air back out. The belly is soft. Bring the hands onto the mat. Tuck the toes underneath. Spend as much more time on all fours as you would like before you start to explore a very soft downward facing dog. Bending the knees plenty. Exploring movements forwards, backwards, sideways. Starting to juice up wrists, elbows, shoulders. Drop the head, give it a shake, give it a nod. And then begin to bring your focus into your tailbone, your coccyx, and start to snake the tailbone side to side. Side to side. And as you snake the tailbone, feel that movement ripple along the spine. All the way to the skull. Feel the shoulders affected, the wrists. Notice how the weight shifts in the hands. And keep this little snaky sway as you start to walk the feet forwards. You get a little sidestep, sidestep. <laughs> and end up in a rag doll. Catch a hold of the opposite elbows. Really bend your knees deeply. And now start to make a little figure of eight led by the elbows. Little snaky spirals. Drop the hands to the floor. Keep this snaky figure of eight swaying motion as you slowly start to roll up through the spine. And you find yourself standing. Keep this little spirally movement going. Juice in the hips. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, twist to one direction. Bend the knees just a little, just to soften in. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, twist the other way. Open the arms wide, just a little softness in the knees. Keep this movement going. You can make it as soft and spirally or as strong and linear as you like. Maybe you do just a little knee bend. Maybe you end up sitting deeply into a chair type shape. You could choose to explore purposefully engaging muscles. Or you could see how soft and intuitive the movement could be. It's your choice. So what do you need in this moment to meet your body, to meet your mind? And once you feel complete with this movement, come to stand with one hand on the belly and one hand on the back. One hand on the belly and one hand on the back. The hands can be facing any direction, back of hand or palm of hand, doesn't matter. You can be still, you can sway. Either looking at something that brings you a sense of grounding and joy or closing the eyes. And let your belly go into your hand. 
Let it go. And as the belly softens and you release the need to control that area of your body, feel the breath deepen. And as the breath draws in, the belly expands, so too do the ribs expand. Forwards, sideways, backwards. And as the belly expands and the ribs expand, so too the chest and the shoulders find a little lift. Give your body all the space it needs to breathe, all the space it needs. And like the arms were an extension of the ribs, an extension of the lungs, inhale, reach the arms out to the side. Exhale, hand to belly, hand to back. Inhale, arms extend. Exhale, hand to belly, hand to back. And you can be still with the body or you can sway. It's up to you. Inhale, reach the arms. Exhale, belly and back. Inhale, reach. Exhale, bring it in. Keep this going a little while longer on your own. Feel free to make it as linear or weird as you like. And start to feel the arm bones connecting into the shoulder blades. So the movement of the arms is initiated from the shoulder blades. And the shoulder blades gliding across the rib cage. So the lungs moving is moving the ribs, the arms, all the way to the fingertips. The whole body, one connected movement. One unit. The next time you breathe in, the arms glide up, the gaze lifts. And exhale, bow forwards, long through the spine, lead with the heart, drift all the way down over the legs. Inhale, hands just below the knees, keep the knees soft, long spine, little halfway lift, press through the back of the head. Exhale, puddle back down over the legs, drop the head. Inhale, little halfway lift again, push up through the back of the body, long through the spine, including the neck. Exhale, melting it down. Again, inhale, puff up like you are floating on a breeze, halfway lift. Exhale, melting it down. Step the right leg back, pop down the knee. Left arm lifts, little twist to the side, inhale. Exhale, reach the left arm far, far forwards. Maybe you bend the right elbow a little bit. Inhale, lift it back up so the arms are in one long line. Exhale, reach forwards, maybe the right elbow bends. Inhale, lift the arm. Exhale, hands down onto the mat. Lift both arms up. Inhale, hands to a prayer in front of the chest, shift the weight forwards, lift your gaze, exhale. Inhale, weight travels back, arms lift. Exhale, hands to prayer, shift the weight forwards, lift the chest, lift the gaze, exhale. Inhale, arms floating up. 
hands all the way to the floor, exhale. Lift off the back knee. Twist again to the left, left arm glides up, inhale. Reach the left arm forwards, maybe you bend the right arm, maybe you even tickle the floor with the left hand as you exhale. Inhale, the arm lifts up, back into that lunge. Exhale, you reach forward, you bow down, drop your head. Inhale, reach the arm up, both hands onto the floor, exhale. High lunge, push into the feet, glide up the arms, inhale. Cactus the arms, bend both knees, little lift of the chest, exhale. High lunge, squeeze the back leg straight, press the arms up, and then cactus, bend both knees, push the elbows down like they were moving against resistance. Inhale, high lunge, purposefully reach up, both hands to floor, exhale. Stepping back, downward facing dog, and give all of your focus into dropping the head. Really drop the head. Any other movements you fancy, take them. Wiggle, sway, be still, it's up to you. Really drop the head. And see in this shape if you can also let your belly go. So the muscles on the front of the belly are designed for rounding the spine. When you shorten them, you round your spine. And in this shape, we're looking to lengthen the spine. And technically, when you lengthen the spine, you actually shorten the back muscles. And because we are shortening the back muscles, we need to lengthen the belly muscles. Let your belly go. Slowly start to walk forward. If you enjoyed that sway of the hips before, you can make use of that now. Find yourself in a rag doll, bend the knees. Again, if you like the sway, bring it in as you slowly roll up. Take a moment when you stand, bring the hands anywhere on the body that calls to you. And be with the breath. On the next inhale, begin to lift up the arms, elbows, wrists, fingers, maybe the shoulders lift, maybe the eyes lift, and exhale, the tail starts to lift as you hinge at the hips and drop all the way forwards, head towards the earth. Find that halfway lift, inhale, back muscles shorten, chest opens, tail and head lifts, Exhale, melting it down, give in to gravity. Inhale, hands just below the knees. Knees soft, halfway lift, push through the back of the body. Exhale, melt it down, drop the head. One more time, inhale, lift halfway, lengthen. Exhale, bow down. Step the left leg back and pop down the left knee. Ground the left hand. Right arm lifts, little twist to the side. Inhale. And then reach the right arm forwards. Maybe you bend the left elbow a little bit. Inhale back into that kneeling twist. Hand directly to the sky. Exhale, hand journeys forwards. Weight travels forwards. Inhale, arm up. 
Exhale, reach it forward. Last moment in the twist, inhale. Both hands to the earth, exhale. Into your kneeling lunge, reach up the arms, inhale. Hands come to prayer at the chest, shift your weight forward, little lift of the chest, exhale. Inhale, slowly back into your kneeling lunge, reach up the arms, maybe explore a little squeeze of the left glute. Exhale, travel forward, bring the hands down, lift the gaze. Inhale, reach the arms. Exhale, shifting it forward. Inhale, back to your kneeling lunge. Both hands down onto the earth. Exhale. Lift off the back knee. Weight into the left hand. Right arm lifts up. Inhale. Reach the arm forward. Maybe you lean forward. Exhale. Back to the twisted lunge. Inhale, reach the right arm to sky. Exhale, reach forward. Take this two more times on your own. And then both hands onto the earth. Trust the strength of your legs. Float into a high lunge. Reach the arms skywards. Fill your lungs. And as the exhale comes, cactus the arms, bend both knees, little lift of the chest. Inhale, high lunge, squeeze your back leg. Exhale, cactus, press towards the earth. Inhale, purposeful lift up. Exhale, mindful lower down. Back to your high lunge, fill your lungs. And exhale, glide the hands down to the earth, stepping back, downward facing dog. Drop the head, <clears throat> soften the belly. And bring your focus now into pushing into the hand, back towards your feet. It doesn't matter if the knees are bent or straight, if the heels are on or off the floor, it doesn't matter. And as you push into the hands, the weight travels back towards the feet. As you push into your hands, the shoulders come towards the ears. Let it happen. Let the shoulders come towards the ears. As the shoulders come towards the ears, you stretch the muscles down the sides of the back and the sides of the waist. Explore that feeling. And start to walk the feet forwards towards the hands. Really drop your head. Drop your head when you get to ragdoll. Really let it go. And slowly rolling up. Bring the hands anywhere on the body that calls to you. Take a moment to breathe, to be with yourself. Step one foot behind the other. Doesn't matter which side, just step one foot behind the other and reach it far back on a diagonal and tuck the toes. The leg that's gone backwards, that arm, reach it out to the side. The other arm, bring it behind your back. You could bring the back of the hand onto your back or you could reach around for the hip. You do what feels intuitive. Take a big inhale, reach the arm up to the sky. And as it starts to reach all the way over to the other side, exhale and bend both knees. Inhale, reach the arm up. And then simply exhale, lower the hand down and follow the hand with your eyes. Reach the arm up, inhale, 
pull the shoulder out of its socket. Exhale as you reach over, bend both knees. Getting deep into the side body. Reach the arm up, squeeze the legs together. Inhale as the hand lowers back down, follow the hand with the eyes. Inhale, glide it up. How much more length can you get? Exhale, side bend, reach it over, drop your head. Inhale, lift. Exhale, hand down, follow the hand with your eyes. Reach both arms up, interlace the fingers, push the hands up towards the sky, bend both knees and start to send your hips back and reach the arms forwards. Let the shoulders come all the way up to the ears. Breathe strongly. Trust the strength of your legs. Bring the hands all the way down to the earth and drop your head. Now bring your weight into your front foot a little bit more, but you decide how much you want to straighten either leg. Okay, but bring your weight more into your front foot. If you prefer, you can be up on fingertips or you could rest your hands on some blocks if you have some handy. Now really drop the head, bring the weight into the front foot and see if you can lift the back foot off and really straighten out that back leg as much as possible. So it's reaching back and away, the back leg, and the front leg is working really hard to hold your weight to keep you balanced. Bring the back foot onto the floor again. Interlace the fingers. Reach the arms forwards and up to glide you all the way to standing. Keep them interlaced. Take a little lean over to the side of your back leg. You can really let the shoulders lift here. It gives extra stretch down the sides of the back because some of those back muscles attach onto your arm. So if you don't lift the shoulders, you're kind of cutting the stretch off. Good, lower the arms down. Bring yourself back to standing with both feet, hands anywhere on the body, and take a moment to breathe. If it feels nice to sigh or flutter the lips, Hey, bring the other foot behind, reach it long and back on the diagonal, tuck the toes onto the floor. It's okay if your bum is sticking out, that's totally normal, doesn't matter. It's just about reaching that leg away so that we start to open up this hip here. The leg that's reaching behind, that arm, that side, bring it to the side. The other arm, bring it onto your back where you could reach it around to the hip. Okay. Inhale, start to reach the arm up, 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 shoulder can lift. Exhale, reach over to the side, little bend of your knees. Inhale, the arm back up, legs straighten a little or all the way. And exhale, the arm comes out to the side, follow the hand with your eyes. Inhale, gliding it up, pull the arm away from the body, all the way. Exhale, gooey, lean over to the side, squeeze the knees bent. Inhale the arm back up, really spread your fingers. As the arm lowers down, you follow the hand with the eyes, just to integrate the neck stretch with the arm movement. Arm comes up, fill your lungs. Bend it over, curtsy it down. Reach it up, hand down. Take one more on your own. Good, 
Good. Interlace your fingers. You might want to interlace them the other way. Doesn't really matter too much, but if you like that kind of thing. And then push the arms up towards the sky. Now really lift your shoulders. Don't be afraid of having shoulders lifted. There's a big difference on intentional shoulder lifting and just shoulder tension. Okay, so lift them to strengthen them. Start to bend the knees, the hips go back, the arms come forwards. And you really find that oppositional reach. Arms pushing forwards, tailbone pitching backwards. And then bring the hands all the way down to the earth and take a moment there, drop your head. Drop your head. Start to bring the weight towards the front foot. And you decide how much that front leg is straight or bent. Mine's definitely bent. And start to lift the back leg off the floor and really reach it away. Really reach it away. So we're starting to cultivate this sense of strength and trust in the standing leg. Getting that outer hip really strong. Pop the back foot on the floor, interlace the fingers again. You come up the way you came down. So you push the arms forwards, you lengthen through the spine and you squeeze your way all the way up. And then take a really good lean over towards the back leg. Let the shoulders lift towards the ears to give maximum stretch down the side of the back, the side of the waist. And come back to the center. Ground both feet, hands anywhere on the body that you choose. And take a moment to be with your breath. Do what you need to do to let go of your jaw, your belly. Bring your mind back to that thought of practicing with no ill will. A practice without goals, perhaps, where you simply move and you tune into what the movement offers you. So receiving what's given rather than searching for something more. Bringing one foot now in front of the other, tucking the toes with their knee out to the side. It doesn't matter which side, we'll end up doing both. Bringing the hands together in front of the chest in a prayer position. Bending the standing leg. You might, the, front, the foot that's in front, it might need to move forward a little bit just to get out of the way. But bending the standing leg and sending your hips back so you find this chair shape and lots of length through the spine. Reach the arms wide as you inhale. Remember the arms like an expansion of the lungs. And exhale, touch the front foot with the opposite hand. Inhale, arms out to the side again. Exhale, touch the foot with the same hand as foot. Little test of balance. Inhale, arms through the center, out to the side. Exhale, opposite hand to foot. Send the hips back to help that movement. Inhale, arms to the sides. Exhale, same hand as foot. Inhale, arms to the side. Hold them here. Really get the sense of pulling in opposite directions. Bring the weight into the big toe of the standing foot and start to point the front foot so that you can lift it off the ground. It just hovers just in front. Lots of strength in the hips. See if you can come to standing, lifting that front foot up like you were gonna do tree pose, but it just hovers wherever it gets to without your hands being used. Lift the arms. Lift the gaze. Trust your legs. 
See if you can soften your belly here. You don't need to hold it strongly. We're trying to lengthen the spine. That means shortening the back muscles and lengthening the belly muscles. The more you can let your belly go, the more you can relax and then focus on balance. Both feet onto the floor. Have a little sway, a little shake of the ankles. Bring the hands anywhere on the body that you would like and take some breathing. Bring the hands anywhere. So we'll balance on the other side and then we start to journey towards the floor. So this is the last little moment of standing, fire building. <laughs> so bring the other foot in front. So you switch sides. Okay. Bring the hands to the prayer in front of the body. Start to bend the standing leg. You adjust the foot in front as needed to make space for yourself. Send your hips back. Have this sense of the chest lifting. It's like you were doing a little mini back bend, but you keep a slight control on the back bend by gently drawing in your lower ribs a little bit. Reach the arms out to the side. Take a deep inhale. See if you can touch the front foot with the opposite hand. The other arm can lift up. So you make like airplane arms. Inhale, arms back to the sides. Exhale, same hand as foot. Move slowly so you have time to figure out the balance. Reach the arms to the sides, inhale. Opposite hand to foot. Arms out to the side. Same hand as foot. And when you move slowly, you give yourself the chance to be curious about what you need to engage, about what you can let go, about what you engage by accident. Reach the arms out to the sides. Have this sense that like they were being pulled in opposite directions. The shoulder blades reaching away from one another. Bring your weight into your big toe of your standing foot. Start to point the foot in front so that it can lift off the ground. Embrace any wobbling, any falling, any shaking. And slowly start to lift to standing. Keep pulling the arms in opposite directions. Glide the front foot up as if you were going to do tree, but you just keep the foot at the side, so no hands, all strength. And then start to lift the arms up. And then go through that process of relaxing into the shape. What do you need to do? Sighing. Softening the belly, releasing the jaw. And then both feet onto the earth. Keep the arms lifted. Reach them even higher. Take a deep inhale. And then fall over the legs. And come all the way to standing. We'll take that again. Reach the arms. Inhale. Good old swing over the legs. <sighs> One more time like that. You're going to throw it down. Inhale. <sighs> and make your way towards downward facing dog. And let your tail really lift. Maybe a deep bend of the knee helps to facilitate that. Come down onto the shins and back into that high kneeling position. So just like we did at the start, inhale the arms lift. Exhale, twist to one direction, open the arms wide. Inhale, lift through the center. Exhale, twist the other way. And now start to make it about the twist. So how far behind you can you send your gaze and your chest? Even if it's more through the neck than anywhere else, we can really get that sense of length and release through the neck and the tops of the shoulders. So as you gaze behind you, pull the other arm. So if you're looking back, the arm that's forward, really pull it forwards to start to get that sense of release in the neck. Good, come back through the center. 
and bring yourself to sit with the feet forwards. Sit with the feet forwards, feet on the ground, knees bent. And have the feet apart and hold on to the backs of the thighs. Some people prefer to um, turn the legs out and have the knees wider, it's totally up to you. Make it spacious and comfortable for your body, for your body, that's what it's all about, always. <laughs> Find that real length through the spine. We're gonna explore the shoulders, so reach up the right arm. You can use the breath however you like for this section. And now really reach the shoulder up towards the ear and then start to turn the hand out to the side you can lean forwards onto your thigh as you twizzle that arm all the way and then twizzle it all the way back. Same arm up, shoulder lifts right up. Lead by the little finger. It turns towards the back of the room and it starts to twizzle so much you can lean forwards and hug that knee. Come back forwards one more time. Twizzle the arm, shoulder lifting all the way. You've got so much more mobility with the shoulder lifted. Bring the arm up and lower it down, hold on to the back of the leg. So this connection here is just to help us get this sense of squeezing in. So lifting up the other arm, lift the shoulder right up. So you feel like you're leaning over to the side a little bit even. Lead with the little finger, start to turn the hand towards the back, lean over onto your front thigh and then twizzle the arm forwards again. Shoulder up, lead with a little finger, rotate it back, rotate it forwards and release one more time. Lift and rotate and come all the way forwards again. Okay, back to the first arm. Lift, excuse me, lift it up. Lift the shoulder into the ear, or the shoulder up towards the jaw perhaps. Start to reach the arm far forwards and then hook it underneath that same leg, so same arm as leg. Bend the elbow if you can and tap your back. Then unravel, reach the arm forward and lift it up. Lift the shoulder towards the jaw. Reach as far forward as you can. You can use the connection with the other hand and leg. Start to turn the palm up as you reach the arm underneath. You reach underneath the leg and maybe you tap your back with the back of your hand. Arm reaches forwards and all the way up. One more time like this. Reach it forward, start to draw it underneath. So in this shape, we're in internal shoulder rotation. And then come all the way up and out. Catch a hold of the back of the leg, other side. Lift the arm, lift the shoulder up. Reach as far forward as you can. The spine is rounded. You start to reach the arm underneath, underneath the leg. If you can get the elbow far enough under, you'll be able to bend the elbow and tap the back. If you can't get the elbow underneath, just keep reaching. And unravel the arm and reach all the way up. Two more on this side. Lift and reach. Glide underneath. If the elbow is under, bend it, tap. Reach up. One last time. Exploring it at your own pace. Good. And then bring the hands behind you with the fingers pointing backwards. Draw the shoulder blades together to lift the chest. And maybe this is a nice place to stay. Perhaps you want to push into the feet and lift the hips, either with the chin tucked or with the head dropped all the way back. And in this shape as well, you can have a little shift between hands and feet. And if you chose to keep your hips on the floor, you can have a little shift of lifting and lowering the chest a little bit. It's up to you. And then come all the way down. Find any comfortable seat. It could be cross-legged. Maybe you like to sort of sit with the legs wide. It doesn't really matter. The focus is not on the lower body. So really make your lower body comfy. 
turn the palms up to face the sky with the hands um, close to the floor. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, push the hands forward, round your back. Inhale, arms lift up, shoulders lift. Arms come wide to the side, the shoulders press down as the arms press down and you exhale. Journey the hands up through the center, inhale. Push the hands forward, round your back. Arms up, shoulders up, inhale. Arms wide, shoulders start to come down, exhale. Take this again, inhale. Push forward, round. Drop your head. Lift the shoulders, lift the arms. Arms wide, shoulders lower, arms lower. If you've crossed legs and you want to switch the cross, feel free. Doesn't matter too much, but if you like that kind of thing. And then bring fingertips onto the floor by your sides. Again, if cross legs is not for you, just open the legs out. It really isn't a big deal. It's about the upper body. So fingertips out towards the side. Start to walk one hand further away, as far away as it can go without leaning over towards it. So you just wiggle the hand out and then gently tip the head away from that hand. Now soften your belly and explore turning the head a little bit. Any movement there with the head, with the neck, go really slowly. See if you can tune into and follow your tissues. What is your body crying out for? What does your mind need right now from these movements? What state is your energy in? How can the practice serve you instead of you serving the practice? Okay, bring the chin all the way onto the chest. And bring the head up through the center. Start to walk the other hand, the other side, the other hand out to the side. And again, tip your head away from the hand. And explore the movement. What do you need on this side? It might be different to the other side. Maybe you find a spot and you think, yeah, I'm going to stay there. I'm going to breathe into it. Maybe it feels good to continually move. Bring the chin all the way down to the chest. Bring the head back up through the center. And then take a little sort of rippling movement with the upper body. So the head comes down and you allow this little ripple in the upper body. It's, the head, like, you, it's like you were drawing a circle forwards with your chin. You can keep the legs as they are or you could hold on to the fronts of the knees for some support. If you chose to have your legs uncrossed, you might want to bring the feet onto the floor and that way you can get a little bit more movement. And maybe you feel that the shoulder blades get involved. Just getting out all of those cobwebs. Okay, and come to lie all the way on the back. And if you're going to want something warm, now would be a good time to put it on for the rest of the practice. Because we'll be spending the rest of the practice doing things that are quite still and slow. So feel free to put on any warm layers. And even that, make that part of your practice. There's no rush, like rushing to get your jumper on to get back to the practice. Make the putting of the jumper on part of the practice. How does that textile feel against the skin? How does it feel to snuggle yourself up in something, to glide on your socks, to pull a blanket over, to dim the lights or change the music? All of it, choices, part of your practice. 
And then you're going to find yourself lying on the floor with the knees bent and the feet on the earth. Take a moment here to really give the weight of the body into the ground. To give the pelvis to the earth. The skull. The back of the rib cage. Soles of the feet. Whatever of the arms is touching the floor. Then bring the arms all the way overhead so that they're on the ground. As you inhale, slowly let one knee open out to the side, just one knee and feel the movement ripple up through the body. And exhale, gradually bring that knee back up through the center. Inhale, the other knee opens out to the side. Exhale through the center. As you repeat this movement, one side and then the other side, feel the floor tenderly massaging the back of the body. Bring your focus into your toes. How do the toes feel during this movement? Can you tune into the space between the toes and the air gently circulating in that space? Start to let both knees drift over to one side. Use the breath however you like. Bring both knees back through the center let both knees drift over to the other side. Keep this going, feel the movement spiral up through the body. How do your fingers feel? Can you feel the connection between the palm of the hand and the back of the hand? You sense into the hand bones nestled within the skin. Breathe into the belly. You start to bring your legs for Supta Baddha Konasana, soles of the feet together. Knees open to the side, arms staying overhead. If this feels a little too much on the hips, pick something different, anything you like. Put a position in which you can have relative stillness and focus on the softening and expansion of the belly with the breath. Inhale, diaphragm and breath moves down. Exhale, diaphragm and breath moves up. Inhale, belly expands. Exhale, belly softens. Inhale, energy and life in. Exhale, surrendering and releasing. Slowly start to bring the knees back up towards the sky and take another moment here, giving the weight of the pelvis into the earth. And begin to bring your body towards the position you would like to end the practice in. Maybe you want to lengthen the legs out, bring the arms to the sides and have Shavasana. Perhaps you would prefer to lie on your side. 
Perhaps you would prefer to sit or lie on your front. It's absolutely up to you. Take your time and be fussy about your comfort. Be fussy. You deserve to be comfortable. In no rush, you get there when you get there. But when you find the shape that you would like to end the physical practice in, take an extra few moments easing off the neck. So maybe you turn the head side to side. Maybe you use the hands and give the neck a little massage. Perhaps you gently bring some tender touch into the jaw. And once you feel ready to embrace stillness with the physical body, take some deep sighs. And then release the control of the breath back to the body. And remember that this final position is yours to choose. And if after being there for a few minutes, you wish you'd chosen something else, you can move. If you'd rather sit than lie, if you'd rather lie on your side than your back, whatever, you can choose. It's your body, it's your practice. Make your own traditions. Cast your mind back to the idea of having no ill will and expanding that notion out to having absolute compassion, working towards having acceptance. We talk about non-attachment in yoga and that is a wonderful goal and it also is a pretty lofty one. <laughs> so before we can have non-attachment, we can start to work towards recognizing, accepting, so that we know what it is we have a tendency to attach onto, to start to work towards letting it go, holding on a little less tightly. So take the mind on a journey through the body releasing off anywhere that may be harboring a little tension, the toes, the feet, ankles, shins and calves, the knees, thighs, the pelvis, the belly, the lower back, the chest, the upper back, The shoulder blades and shoulders. The neck, the throat. The skull, the face. The jaw. The eyebrows. Upper arms the elbows, the forearms, the wrists, the hands, the fingers, fingertips, fingernails, 
the whole body where it is in this space, in this time, simply existing and knowing that that is enough. I give you a few moments peace without me talking and I'll speak in a few minutes time to move you out of this position. As you stay in this place of physical stillness, call to mind an area of your body that you tend to have negative self-talk around. Maybe it's something that you struggle to accept the physical appearance of. Maybe it's an area that sometimes is painful or doesn't move in the way you wish it would. Maybe it's something to do with your movement practice. You repeat a phrase like saying that you have tight hamstrings. Think of an area of your body that you have physical, negative self-talk around. And see if you can rephrase, reframe, or offer some positive, or if positive seems too much, just working towards acceptance. Some sentences that you could offer yourself now around that area of your body. If that feels too much of a task right now, that's fine. Note this down and give yourself some space and time later to explore. Why can't you find something accepting or positive to say around that area? Spend some time exploring it later. Anytime a task is offered, you can always put a pin in it. And wherever it is that you're thinking of, send your breath there now. Take some deep breaths and send your breath into that part of your body. And now gradually start to welcome in some movement, some stretches, wiggles, twists, turns. Start to wake up the physical body. And there is no rush. I will wait for you. 
And eventually you'll find yourself seated. No rush, I'll wait. And as you start to bring yourself towards a seated position, remember that it could be any comfortable seated position. And that even beyond that, if seated isn't working for you right now, feel free to stay lying or come standing, up to you. And once you find that position, ensure that the front of your body feels free and easy, easy and ready to create sound or to enable a deep breath. So you're just tall enough that you can breathe or create sound, but not so tall that you feel really tense. Feel free to keep the eyes closed or look at something that brings you a sense of grounding and joy. And I'm going to repeat the peace chant, the mantra that helps to cultivate a sense of work and effort that is filled with compassion and good wishes and no ill will. I'll start with an om and then I'll do each line twice. So if you would like to join in and you don't know it, you can join in with the second line. If chanting is not your thing, just spend some time in quiet reflection. And feel free to join me for the om at the beginning and then the second line of each, if you like. And then there'll be an om and three shanties at the end. So if you wish to join, inhale to om. Oh. with. You could join the palms together or bring the hands to tenderly touch a part of your body to find that sense of connection, acceptance. Soften the breath. And take a moment to decide what you would like to offer yourself today. Maybe there's one thing you can do just for yourself today. Of course we can do something for somebody else, but what can you do for yourself today? And then if they aren't already, feel free to open the eyes, take a moment to bring in the light, to reacquaint yourself with your surroundings.
Thank you so much for joining me for practice. Thank you for spending this time with yourself. Thank you for being part of something bigger than all of us. Thank you, thank you, thank you.